Hey guys, today we're doing an easy and fun little experiment. We're going to take a look at three different microphone configurations, two physical microphones. First, the baseline, a calibrated measurement UMic1 microphone. Then we're going to take out the calibration file and just see what it's like all on its own, just a physical mic without that corrective EQ that's provided by the factory. Each one of these has a, has a unique serial number and each one gets a specific corrective EQ curve to get it as ruler flat as possible when used in your system. And without that file, this is an unknown and really unusable for calibration. Then we're also gonna test it against a popular myth, ah, cords tangled, using an AVR calibration microphone. These are completely unknown and there are multiple variables that are gonna mess up your calibration. We're gonna see how badly. This microphone is only supposed to be used with your AVR to do its speaker level and distance and phase and that kind of thing calibration. But you don't know how inaccurate this is because that corrective EQ file is still there, but it's baked into the AVR. So when you plug this in, it knows how far off this is, but it's not telling you. They don't give you a file to use because you're not supposed to use this with anything except your AVR calibration. But some people think you can plug this in and use it like any other mic. That is just patently false. And I'll show you how far off it can be. Now this is the Yamaha. This is the latest one with the latest YPOW calibration. Odyssey and the other makes have very similar mics and the same types of problems. The other issue is this plugs into your sound card directly through the 3.5 mil jack. And it's going through whatever sound card and DAC and processing you may or may not be running on your operating system. All of which plays a part. The UMic1, for example, or the Dayton Audio or any other type microphone like this, is a USB data mic. It's not going through your sound card processing. So, let's get to testing. And here are the results. This is the calibrated UMic1. And you can see I've got a very nice flat curve from single digits all the way up. This is just the base region. Let's take a look at full range. I do have to apply a little bit of smoothing just so it's readable, but you can see it's very nice in room. We'll turn on the smoothing here. And there we go. Now I do have a little bit of EQ. I attenuate my top end just a bit. That's what I prefer. And you can see extension goes flat down to single digits. Now let's go back to the base. This is what most people are using REW for. We'll turn off smoothing again and compare it to the same mic without the calibration file. We'll see how far off it is. Not too far off. One to two dB here and there. It's not as accurate. It's got some dips and it's got some places where it's just off a little bit. Let's take a look at the full range. Definitely see some more variation in the full range. Let's turn on some smoothing. We'll try 148 on both and see what that looks like. So you can see there are differences and at points it is quite extreme, five to 10 dB here and there. But for the most part, it's hugging the line. I mean, it's not too far off. For general EQ purposes, this is gonna work. If you lose your serial number and you don't have a calibration file, at least especially for the base region, I mean, it's pretty darn close. So I wouldn't have any reservations in a pinch of using the calibration mic without the file. Now let's take a look. Let me turn off smoothing real quick on both of these and compare these to the AVR microphone. This is going straight into the sound card with no processing, just into REW. And I think it's plainly obvious how far off this type of microphone is. And this is what the AVR is internally correcting for. This is not for use in this type of measurement. And let's look at the base alone. I think that should perfectly illustrate why you can't do this. And if you are doing it, 
how completely out of whack your results are going to be <laughs> if you're actually using this as your measurement baseline. I mean, that's just, the sensitivity is completely different and completely different in different ranges than the calibrated microphone. You can see it's got a slow roll on up to about 100 hertz and then it's fairly flat and then it rolls back down at about 7,000. Couldn't tell you why, only Yamaha and Denon and Marantz and all of them can tell you why they don't use a ruler flat mic. I have no idea, don't really care. The AVR needs to know and the AVR takes care of all of that. So hope this helps and I hope it opens some eyes and we'll see you next time.